How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we start another build and it involves this. Yep, the bone shaker. What are we doing to this? Well, you can see the engine's already gone. So let's get to it. Now I'll go ahead and tell you exactly what we're doing with this. And I've been wanting to do one of these ever since I saw somebody else do one. And the person that I saw do this is Ben over at BP Custom Creations. And what this is going to be is a wind-powered, wind-driven, or a cell car, however you want to look at it. Because as you can see, I used the engine off of this for a custom Camaro I did for somebody a little while back. And you know, whenever you build something, you always save the extra pieces and stuff. So I've had this laying around trying to figure out what to do with it. So I thought that I would do that. So with that stated, let's get this apart, shall we? As you can see, <laughs> that didn't take but a second. I already had it drilled apart anyway. But here's the body. Pretty nice. I like it the way it is. But I don't think that I'm going to leave it like that. I think I'm going to strip it down. Because here's my thought process behind this. Gas lines, right? Post-apocalyptic. We've done had the war. Everybody's fighting amongst themselves for every little scrap they can muster and everything. Well, one of the things that's going to happen is you're going to lose power. Okay? That's that. You know, the grid's going to be gone. Uh, gas stations are going to be non-existent. The only way that you're going to get gas, if you can even find it, is, you know, selling your soul to the devil. So people look for a more ingenious ways to travel. And that's my thought process behind this, is kind of a post-apocalyptic type build. No, there's not going to be guns. I don't think there's going to be any guns on this or anything, but... It will be cell driven just because, like I said, you know, getting from point A to point B can be very expensive during these times. So we're going to make this into a gas lens build. And these tires are going to definitely go. As a matter of fact, I'll show you what I'm going to put on it. I'm going to put these on. I used these for one time before on a custom that I did for myself. It was a rocket oil car. Because, let's, uh, let's just say, again, you need, unless you're going to stand there with a the bicycle pump and pump up tires, you need something that will last a lot longer that you can count on getting in and taking off and going down the road. And voila, you know, these having wagon wheels on there will be a lot safer and more economical than trying to keep rubber tires pumped up. And with gasoline, there's going to be scrap metal and all kind of stuff laying around anyway to tear up your, your rubber tires. So... With that stated, let's assign it a case. Alright, got the case. Alright. Cell car. At least that's what I'm going to call it for now. Go ahead and I'm going to pop these wheels off because we definitely are not going to need them. Like I said, we're going to using the other wheels I'm gonna find the right pick too much junk in this one let's just use these for now what the heck one hand got the other pick out so that don't happen again but that'll definitely get painted all so these wheels I am dropping everything. This is ridiculous. <laughs> those wheels will be put into the container. We're not using those. The interior will probably get painted. The skull, we're going to keep it, but it'll probably get some type of detailing. And this will definitely get changed. So, with that stated, let's start the changing process. If 
bye bye and that one really syncs up fast it doesn't take me just a minute for that one to go bye bye <laughs> in the process we'll see this bad boy tomorrow let's put a little bit of paint on this bad boy shall we the color we're going to be using and like i said since this is a post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic post type or gasoline build what we're going to be using is some red oxide primer i found this at walmart believe it or not i couldn't believe it i walked in there and they actually had it and it was only four dollars and 99 cents compared to 13 and everywhere else like agri supply or anywhere like that so <clears throat> i already got the base I already got the base focus done up with adhesion promoter so we're going to spray that first all right let's try this like i said i already hit it with adhesion promoter so it should stick fairly well which it is going on really nice and to be honest we don't have to be perfect with this because it's a gasoline build anyway right so there we go there's the base it went on perfect no problems so now we can do the body as always try to hit the inside of the body first try not to create too many runs And that should do it. I mean, look how good that looks already. Went on nice and flat, complete coverage, no runs, no nothing. And of course, this is not going to be the only color. I got to hit it from this angle because I see a little spot of silver right there at the battery. But no runs, no anything. That's not going to be the only color we put on it. We're going to have to dirty it up a little bit. But at least now we have color on it. Alright, let's do this bone shaker inside. I want it to be a black. So I have some 4030, some black sealer, and got it bent down. Put on a light coat to start with, and then we'll come back and hit it again. And I hit the whole thing with adhesive promoter too, so hopefully we won't have any problems. Hopefully it'll stick, but as you can see, it's kind of beating up right now. So, I don't know. Like I said, I've got 4030 in this and I have adhesive promoter on the plastic and it was thoroughly clean. Heh. Sometimes, no matter what you do. But it's going to be a gas lens type build anyway, so it's no real big deal, but still, you know, you want it to look right. You want it to look like crap. And that doesn't look good at all. All right, now let's figure out how we're going to get this thing to go. Like I said, we're going to use wind power for this, but there's going to be a few things that we're going to need. And here's what we're going to need. We're going to need, of course, the car. Then we're going to need something to create the main structure, which is called a mast, which is going to go right in where the engine would go. But since there's no engine, that's why we're making it sail power, because wind is readily available. <coughs> Then we're going to need some cross pieces to go on the mast for the sail to attach to. But first, we're got, we've got to figure out a way to mount the mast. Because if you don't know, it'll flop back and forth. It'll go left, right, front, back if we don't secure it some kind of way. So, let's, let's use some styrene to fill in the gaps to hold the mast in place. But first, we've got to figure out what we want to use. So I'm going to use this pin, cut off a section of it and mount it just under this hole, glue it to the body so that the mast has something to sit in so it can pivot. So I'm just going to cut it off, sand it down, test fit it a couple times, sand some more, test fit it a couple times, sand some more until we have it just right. And it doesn't take just a minute to do all this, you know, do this in your spare time before you go to bed or whatever. And you got a few minutes to, to, to dedicate to something and you just do it. 
like I said, to keep fitting and everything. And once you get it, then we're going to position it. And I'm going to use, I'm going to sit it in there and I'm going to use the mast itself to determine the location. As you can see, I'm all thumbs today, but I'm going to sand it down just a little bit more here in a second. Make sure everything goes together, everything still fits the way I want it. <clears throat> and I'm trying to figure out the height also, because I don't want it too tall, but I don't want it too short either, because, you know, it has to have a sail big enough to catch the wind. So now that I've got that figured out, I'm just going to measure a section and cut it. I'm going to round off the end that goes down into the piece of plastic that I cut, so it, it spins easily without catching anything. And I'm just going to double check the height. And as you can see here, that's just too tall. Really, really too tall. And I honestly wish I had smaller skewers, but this is all I can find. That's what it is, a bamboo skewer. I was using sandpaper to give me a rough idea. I've trimmed some of it off, and I'm chest fitting it again. And I'm still not quite happy with it. I think it's still just a little bit too tall. So after another cut, we'll have what we want. As you can see, it's a lot shorter now, and I still think it's a touch too tall, but we'll, we'll decide that after we get it all assembled. But that's where the cross pieces are going to go roughly, and then i got to make the sail. And the sail's not going to be this big by no means. That's, that's way too large. That would move a school bus. But I'm just, you know, eyeballing it, trying to work it out in my head what I want to use, how I want to do it. And yeah, that's what we're doing. Now I'm going to Put the plastic piece back in there, like I said. Get it close. Move it around. Use the mast itself to center it. While I hold the body together, I'm going to move it around if I need to move it. And once I'm happy with it, I'll leave it together like that. Test fit it again, make sure it's correct. Get it where I want, move it, get it just right. Then I'm going to take the super glue and go around both sides of it. Of course, the top wants to come completely off, not reveal the nipple, so I have to fight that now. <laughs> but, I'm also, but I'm just going to take the top off. I'm going to take the super glue and run a, a good bead around the edge of it. Like I said, I'm not concerned if I have too much build up or if it gets on anything because this is just a, a cast lens type of build so the rougher it looks the better it looks right but I'm gonna go around the sides both sides and then once I do that once I get it to where I, I like it I think I have enough on there I'm gonna hold it together make sure the mask still goes in nothing moved and if it does I can move it at this time and then once I get it just right I will hold the car together let it dry for a few seconds, then I'll take the car back apart. But the reason I'm taking it back apart is so I can run more glue around the rest of the plastic. I've given it a few minutes to dry. As you can see, I've got it built up on both sides. Now I'm just going to finish going around. It's going to be like a complete weld all the way around it with super glue. And this bottle's about, this tube's about out anyway, so it doesn't matter how much I use or whatever. Like I said, the rougher it looks, the better. <laughs> And we'll paint this later on, the same color as the base. That's what we got. Now we can go on and work on the mast. I let it dry overnight, just because, and as you can see, the mast still falls, even though we have that piece in there. So what I'm going to do is take some styrene that I had cut for another project, or scrap pieces from another project, and I'm just going to cut them and put them around the mast itself kind of like uh, if it was metal straps that you just had laying around and you put that on there to keep the mast in location i'm just going to cut them roughly nothing exact no two pieces match and just fit them in here once i'm happy with it i'll take the glue glue it in place and do another one well, i think this is looking pretty good we'll come back and paint all this later I'm not worried about painting it now. We're just worried about getting it where it needs to be. So I'm just going to add a dab of glue on each side as I fight this empty tube, or almost empty tube. Put a dab there. There we go. 
and put a dab over here and of course since the car is painted it will kind of mess up the paint which like I said this is a gas lens build so the rougher it looks the better it looks but of course nothing wants to come out and then when you do squeeze it it, it wants to gush out too much but that's okay like I said the more the better on this and once you do this the styrene actually sticks really quick with the super glue so try to lay it down exactly where you want it to start with because you won't have but a second or two to move it unless you want to pull it back off and cut another piece and as you can see dropping stuff like normal <laughs> but yeah I'm just going to stick it on here put one side down put the other side down and then take my tweezers and move it around get it straight got that piece down now we're going to put another piece right like I said no two pieces are cut the same super glue that piece down Use the mask, stick another piece down, and put the last piece in. And before long, this sticker will be standing up straight like a, one of those British soldiers. <laughs> but there's that piece on. And there we go. Yeah. And now I'm just going to go back around and press down the corners ever so lightly. Make sure it's got good contact so it dries. And as you can see, it looks like crap. That's what we want. Now i got to figure out the cross pieces. Alright, I'm going to use toothpicks because they just seem to, to look right in comparison to the size of the mask. I'm trying to figure out where I want them. Then I'm going to take this little Dollar Tree saw that I bought that works perfect for this and just cut a couple grooves in so that they sit in a little bit. They kind of lock in place. And once I'm happy with that, I'll figure out how high I need the other one, put it in. As you can see, I'm just adjusting, trying to figure out the right height, make sure I got it straight with the other one. Mark it, cut it, sit it in about the same depth, and then glue it in. And here you can see that's about how, how it's going to look. Looks pretty good, but I'm still double-guessing myself about the height this time. But we'll work that out at the end. As you can see, it spins freely, looks pretty good. A little large for the car, but once I put the wheels on everything on it, we'll see if I need to cut it. But now it's time to do a little bit of dirtying this bad boy up. We've got some black, I've got some graphite, uh, just a few different colors. First, I'm going to give it a black wash on the base. I'll just coat it real heavy, and then I'll take the paper towel and wipe it off. And that's what we end up with. Now I'll let it dry, and probably come back and add a little mud to it. But there's the three colors I'm working with. I'm going to use this for the mask. I'm going to use that for the, the bracing that goes around the mask itself. So I'm just going to take that. I'm going to dry brush it on. I'll dip the brush in the paint, dab a little bit of it off, and just brush it on. Once I'm happy with that, I'll move on to some mudding. And here's how you mud. You, you put it on and use your finger and brush it down. Because by doing that, it streaks it. It leaves it in different lengths. It's not perfect and it just looks more natural. But now that I've got that, I need to do the wheels the same way because in gasoline world, there's no paved roads. It's all dirt, all chunks of pavement here and there. So there's no car washes either, sadly. <laughs> so now we got to dirty the wheels up a little bit. So I'm just going to do both sets of those, just dry brushing. Here and there, I'm not going all the way around the wheels or anything. Once I get that done, it's time to move on to the mask. I'm going to use the three colors that I have, plus the same uh, flat brown color, which is my mud color, and just roughly paint it on. I'm not looking to cover the whole thing with each color. I'm going to just put it here and there, come back with the next color, put it here and there, where I missed with the first color, and then repeat the process until the whole thing is finally covered. That's what we got. That's what we ended up with. Alright, it's time to figure out the cell on this thing because we've got the mast. And I still may trim this down just a little bit. You can see we got it all weathered and everything. I may trim some of that top off because it just looks too big on the car to me. We'll see when we get it done. But this has to have some kind of cell, right? So, what I'm going to try to use is a paper bag. Just any old standard sandwich paper bag should do. 
where you can use cardboard to a paper front off of cardboard or you know just whatever you want to use you can actually use fabric if you want doesn't matter your your car your build if you decide to do one but i need to figure out how long i need to cut the paper and all that stuff because like i said what we want is we want it to have a little bit of a bow in it not that dramatic of course but we want it to have a little bit of a bow in it so it looks like it's catching wind right so that's what we're going for let's measure this out and cut it so it measures roughly an inch and a half that's why i want a little bit of a bow to it so i'm going to start with two inches and it measures roughly two and a half inches long so i think the best way to lay this out would be like that so that way it needs to be two inches. By two and a half. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just, you know, cutting this bad boy off. Go over here, measure two and a half. If you mess up, make another one. And that's pretty much the amount of bend that I'm looking for right there. I could take a little bit more out of it, but I'm going to go with that. Now, perfectly square piece of paper, right? I'm going to put a little mark so I know which is top. And I can hide that by the mast. That's the way it's going to go. I mean, it doesn't matter if that's top or bottom, but that's the direction because this way is the width, which is a little more bow than what I want. I want it like this. So, next thing is, you know, this is gasoline's post-apocalyptic. It gets dry, very, very dry, very, very hot. So we need a little bit of detail taken out. Because nothing is perfect. So basically you just want to go along the edge and cut some rough spots out of it. Different angles, different shapes. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just freehand it. I'm not going for, like I said, perfection. I'm going to leave some cut marks in it and everything. And this is still too perfect to be in gas lands needs wrinkles so the only way to get wrinkles ball it up right straighten it out flip it over ball it up again straighten it out and just keep doing this till you're satisfied with the amount of wrinkles that are in it and once you're satisfied with it unravel it There's several ways you can do that. I'm going to do just like Ben did. At least I'm going to try to. Not to copy him, but, you know, seems to, the way he did it worked pretty good, so I'm going to use his same method. But first, we've got to make this where it's stiff. And the way we do that is with super glue. That's right, super glue. And I'm using the regular super glue, the thin kind. I may end up having this, this comes from the dollar store, so I'm sure there's not a bunch in it, but I mean, two packs may be enough to do it. I don't know. We're going to find out. But I don't recommend this doing it inside. I remember, because if you ever watched CSI, you know the super glue cuts off fumes. Because what happens is your skin has moisture and oils in it, and whenever you touch something, it, those oils and moisture gets distributed on whatever you touch. So what they do is they put super glue into a container and heat it up and it, it lands on the raised area where the moisture from your oil and your, your, your skin goes. And that's how they can raise fingerprints. So if it puts off fumes for that, you know it puts off fumes inside and we do not want that. So let's take it outside and see how it does.
But let's get the sail mounted to this thing. Once you put the super glue on it, it makes it harder. Here. Now we're going to black wash this and probably brown wash it and a couple other things. But first I want to mount it. As you can see, that's how that bad boy is going to look on there. That is going to look super cool. Benjamin's way, how he did his, looks 100% better than what I'm going to do. I'm just going to super glue mine to the cross pieces themselves. I'll do one at a time. That way I can get the bend on it and get it, get it down the way I want it. But I don't want to copy him exactly, so I'm just going to do mine this way. He did a bang up job on his. It looked great. Really, really tickled the way his turned out. And I'm tickled the way mine's turned out too. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that I can't copy him piece by piece. That's not what you do. So I'm just going to put a little bit more super glue on there. And I don't normally use this thin stuff, but since I have it for this, I'm just going to use it for this. Continue to use it for it. I just put it on there, hold it down for a couple seconds, and like always, it sticks. Now let's do the bottom. Same process. Be very gentle when you lift it up so you don't break anything. Give it kind of a bend to get it where we want it. I'd actually like for it to go over the top of the bottom mast and I can just glue it on there. We go. And I can just go down and run a, a bead of super glue everywhere where it touches. That's all there is to it. I'll let that dry for just a few minutes and then we'll black wash it. Not looking to completely coat it, I'm just looking to give it a darker color to take some of that sheen off. So I just mixed up one drop of black with a bunch of water and that should give me the look I'm going for and then I'll come back with maybe another color. But we're just going to wash this bad boy on here. No particular care. No particular pattern. We're just trying to take some of that sheen off. And then once this is once this dries, we'll hit it with some matte clear, and that'll dull it down some more. But you can see it's not laying flat. It's hitting the low spots and and just giving a little bit of a coat. I'm not even painting in the pattern. I'm straight doing it straight in some spots and. Yeah, let's hit it with another color just because. I'll let me do the back too. While that dries, I'm going to go ahead and see how it's running down the excess. Just take it, kind of tap it off. You can even take the paper towel if you want, or a paper towel, and kind of wick off the real heavy stuff. That'll make the overall effect that much more authentic. Just kind of wick it off. But while we wait on that to completely dry, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with my secondary color, which in this case, case is a spiced berry. Don't know what color it's going to be. Probably a dark, dark red. Don't know. Never used it before. It's just something I've seen and thought I'd try. Yeah, it's a darker brown. I'm just going to put one drop in there. Mix it up. See how it looks. If I don't like the color, I'll add another drop. Yeah, it needs another drop. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the black. I just want it real runny. There we go. Look at that color. Oh, yeah. It's kind of a muddy, dirty, stinky water color. Same thing. Just hit it here and there. Don't even have to cover the whole thing this time. It's just another color to add depth to it, to it when it dries. That's all we're doing. Now, as I alluded to earlier at the very beginning of this, I thought about putting a banner off the top of it. But pirates don't use banners, and I know this isn't a pirate ship or anything, but they don't use banners, they use flags. So I just rough cut a piece of paper bag, a sandwich bag rather, right? Well, it doesn't need to stay that color, it needs to be 
a color. And black is the best because I got a, another thing that I'm going to do to this at the end. So we're just going to hit it with some acrylic black real quick. Doesn't have to be perfect. Matter of fact, it can just be black wash if that's what you want. I'm not going for the black wash, but I'm also not going for perfect. Because I've never seen a perfect pirate flag. So I'll put it heavy some places, light some places. Don't go all the way to the edge. And then I'm going to put some, I'm going to mount this after, after that dries. I'm going to mount this and add something to it. I think you'll like what I add to it. As a final step. You'll see it in the final reveal. You won't, I won't mention it anymore and you won't see it until then. But I'll mount this to the mast, double check the height, and if I'm happy with it, I'll mount this flag, and then clear coat it with matte clear, that way it seals everything in, it won't rub off on your hands or anything, and then you'll see the final reveal. So that will be next. Well, here we are at the end, so you know what that means. This is what we started with. We got to take a trip back in time. It's just a car that I had take the in, taken the engine out of for another project, for a custom idea for somebody. And something told me just not to discard it, because all it was missing was an engine. I could always just replace the engine at a later date with a, a bigger engine or something, you know. But along that time, about that time, I seen a video online from Ben over BP Custom Creations. And I was like, yes, I need to make something not like that but similar to it so be sure to check out his video everything will be below all you gotta do is click on it and it'll go there but anyhow one thing led to another it started rolling through my mind of how i could do it how i could pull it off what i needed so that's when i started choosing the wheels and everything and that's why we don't throw anything away whenever we have something because now i have a completed project i hope you enjoyed the project i hope you enjoyed the ride along and i Definitely hope you enjoyed the final product. So here you go. This is what we got. Thank you all so very much for watching.